And before, what do you think? Like before the audit, on average, what do you? Fifty per. Wow. Not even joking. Over. Those roots look good like too. this would be like, oh, I found some, you know. Yep. But they'll get, they'll get hit with a mummy or something. They're just, they're not even, they're just not here. So you think, you think it was? Explain that again to me in terms of your the cycles. The when I came in and we first started the audit, you were in the middle of a cycle. Yeah, and that one just had to go. Yep. Because it was so bad. So we culled everything, but. And actually, you know, these had died from low water. Yep. But like even right here, you can see like here's a cry soap. Just, he's on there. Yeah. He's looking. Mm -hmm. Young thug. Like, so we went from that. We brought a, you know, we had the new one in, and um, but we, you know, we had seeded it before. We had like a big shipment of beneficials in or anything. It sat here and just kind of the same thing happened. Yep. A lot of aphids. Um, and we planted it it was you know we saw high populations of mummies stuff was working we just couldn't get a clean crop and then this you know is the next round of seeded stuff and this hasn't even i haven't sprayed this on the table that's awesome and like we dip those but like even with the dipping it's like a really nice insurance policy i feel comfortable but there's just nothing here I mean, you saw my seedlings when you first yeah. got here. The roots are looking fabulous, too. Your watering practices yeah. are definitely in a, in a good spot. What's crazy is, like, I was thinking about it from the time when I started here. We were watering for 60 minutes a day, and we were watering after the sun had gone down. Yeah. And not getting the water. And we've gone from that... Uh, hand water everything every day get the water off and boom like i said i'm gonna have to start spotting in the afternoons in the summer but yeah we've gone from an hour of water a day down to like where we where we're at now so that watering practice change also gave a positive benefit when it comes to fungus gnats and shore flies yeah that's what i'm thinking because like and maybe these trays how it sits i like it how it sits above it yeah so i used to do everything in like 404 trays and they'd sit low and it'd build up yeah it's smart you've got this recess on or not a recess but yeah. it, it's above it but it's like this it's just yep it's very clean there's no i remember when i used to step up well like especially when i first started you know it would sometimes i would take one of these and i would scrape off like algae and wipe it into a rag. I mean, like being to be covered. Yeah, I'd wipe it on my pants, yeah. So when we're talking about going from like now. now it's like, some of this stuff has been on this table, like the stuff that's a little darker. Yep. That's like six or seven weeks on this. And it's just not even letting it dry out. So essentially that's the Crazy. crop that's one of the crops that you had seeded right after we started the audit or yeah, after basically yeah like right when we finished the the training yeah, essentially when yeah when you guys started implementing this is the crop wow and then i got hammered on the the tritus on the lettuce eventually but it got old on the table so right that kind of was what it was but so when you're going from this you, you've got back there you've got your seated trays and then you're you're going into stepping up where you're separating them and giving them more space let them get a little bit older and then you go from here and step up to the tower yeah and what's the difference in the tower over the past six or seven weeks really it's like this cycle right now um you know like we were talking about we still have this nutrient deficiency which is hampering us a little bit but just like it's clean i can tell it's clean you can see stuff working. I've got um, a Phidias right there. All right, like here's a mummy on this outer part of the leaf. And so, you know, just like looking through it, especially like what I've learned is it's, it's still like looking at stuff, it's just different. So like if I see some of Phidias on here looking and I see a mummy and it's clean, like I know that it's like the stuff is working for me. But 
I mean, aside from just no aphids, even on like the young growth, because you remember like when we started something like this, it wouldn't look like that. No, you're right. And then the big thing looking at the towers, because when you started, the reason I told you up until this point, I don't need to scout. I can tell where they're at. Right. Like there's none of that on there. So now you actually have to get in there and what you're seeing is you're seeing mummies and you're seeing aphidias. You might find an aphid, but it's it's got maybe a, a, a mummified one next to it or there's an aphidias coming for it. I found on a kale back there this morning, like a little cluster of like three of them. And that's the most I've found through the frog. That's awesome. Yeah, we were talking about like a handful, which is like thousands. Like every single plant, every single leaf. Like we've seen it, and I don't know why. I don't know what it was, but we actually had a tower of these the red giant mustards yep. last time, and like they stayed clean all the way through. And we were like, "This is wild. We didn't have to wash any of it. We just pulled it off. We didn't really have to clean the tower." And I was like, "I don't understand how that was like that, and everything else turned to crap." And then this time around, everything was like that last tower. That's the craziest thing is when you think about like the whole, the whole life cycle of it, the um, the change in time that you have to put into it, yeah. and time putting into it of it not working. So it's like from the seedling stage, like mostly hand killing and some spraying, it was just hard to get under everything, especially right. when it's so close together. And then from spraying these every single three days for, I don't know, if we had this many parties in here, it would be like six hours every three days, and then after that for the harvest having to check every single leaf and wash it off right before you you got it to your customers this is like where the because like it went in clean like that but like over a couple weeks it's just kind of so i think that's where like getting the zero tall yep. and stuff zero really tall like, help a bunch you there. can really it's literally like the line of that's a really good line. point yeah where it's dripping like this is yeah. fun so. yep so it's not about it being overly, it's not about the moisture, it, it's more about the fact that it's hitting right there with the exposed uh, sunlight area, essentially, yeah, yeah. that combination. Yeah, and then plus all the, the um, like the constant nitrogen hitting it, I yeah. know nitrogen no, likes yeah. to eutrophy, so. Yeah, that's a great point. When, you, when you're talking about cleaning the towers, what were you finding before uh, we got started? What, what was the challenge you faced? with cleaning them and what did it it's like <laughs> the, the, di the digital receipts i don't do you have any that are like really black i usually don't take pictures of it because i don't want anyone to i'm gonna see. i'm gonna, when you guys when you guys send me one i'm gonna splice it into this video hopefully i don't do the one you sent me the other day yeah it, it's like this though you know oh wow just like up the whole yeah, tower yeah and you see like the crease, that's super important right there. That stuff's like hard. Yeah, hard but it's like yeah, all this stuff. Chisel. Oh man. It's a pain. Yeah. So, like, I was just like, having like, to clean them up last week. So this is super cool. In terms of your, like. Even like this, and like I don't look at these as much because um, like, you know, Hardy's traditionally, but. Parsley was a really big issue. Parsley and cilantro. There's nothing. Even down on the smaller stuff, there's nothing. So Carter and, and Jeff, like when it comes to growing the crop, you, as growers, it feels good to have uh, a pest free or a uh, little pest in your crop because one you're producing something that you're proud of and whatnot but also from the standpoint of like labor and and then your attitude like and how you feel about coming into work every day what's the difference in terms of like now that you've got at least the tools in your tool belt to really you know control your own destiny how do you feel as opposed to before it's so much better like Knowing that you have things that work and seeing them work for spray and pray, yeah, it's it's a lot better. And it comes back to like what we were talking about yesterday, what we try and do is like, we don't want to come in here and work ourselves to death every day. Like that's right. not the goal here. We're trying to be smart about this stuff. Like coming in and spraying all eight hours and nothing happens, like, 
after a while, it really starts kind of messing up the morale of the place, really. Especially during winter, morale is pretty low with how bad the Petritus and aphids got. Yeah, I was pretty impressed, like, after the first couple, the, the second trip after we had gone through the training, like, you guys were starting to pick it up and, and starting to run with it a little bit and i could see in your in your demeanors like there was a, a percentage of you that was like okay i think something's happening here but then the other percentage was so beaten down from so many months of struggling that it was kind of like it wasn't skepticism but it was like i'll see it when i believe it i'll be really excited like when i see it but the, the thing about biocontrol and, and not just using biocontrol, but changing your cultural practices, changing different things in biosecurity and, and different ways you're, you're operating, you, it takes a little while to see anything happen. And then, you know, to your um, achievement, you guys have to be kind of consistent and and regular with all these things and committed to it to actually make it work so if you give it time and you're patient and you put the work in you get the results that you're looking for essentially like for me i was thinking about this the other day at the beginning you know when we just started and we were like slowly introducing it to just be like oh this isn't working i'm not doing this right or whatever but for me, it was like, well, I'm not going back to spraying Neiman Pygannon. And so it's like, this is going to be it. it. And like, I'll be honest, when you told me it would look like this one day, I did not believe you. <laughs> like, I just didn't. Because this is like all I knew. And this is all Carter had seen. And we just didn't know any different. And it's like we told you, like, we tried to do the lady, like the lady beetles. And just opening a bag and slinging them. Yep. It's like, we just didn't know what to do. And then I can only just, and I've told you this before, I can only imagine how many people like had that first experience with beneficials that we did. Yeah. And then we're like, this doesn't work. Yeah. Like they just fell, they're dead everywhere. And you know, all this garbage. And then it's really just like, like even with you, like we were sprinkling the stuff on the base of the towers the yep. first time. And just being honest with you and being like, Charlie, that's not working. Yep. Like, we picked up our disease, like, the opposite of what we want. It's holding water. And you're like, all right, let's do everything out of, like, quick-release boxes. Yep. And we're like, all right. And then they're rotting and falling, and Carter looks at it, and Carter's like, hey, what if we pinch this? Yep. So it's like, once you have the plan, you just got to tweak it a little bit so, like, it makes sense to you. So, like, I know this isn't going to be a high-pressure tower. So I'm not that worried about it. So I'm gonna localize them here, and then know that I'll have like enough carryover. Right. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. It's like localizing it on my hardy table. Like I hammer my hardy table with those boxes. I hammer like anything that I know is susceptible. Yeah, you can see just like we have like probably like one box on all the lettuce towers, and then three on all the hardy towers. The two or three on all the hardy towers, and like specific herbs. And that's like, when, like uh, when we talk to you about like, you know, like tower guarding getting interesting, you're like, you're like, yeah, I could do a little bit for them, but this is why I really get to audit. It's not cookie cutter. Like everyone's going to yep. have really specific issues or. Yeah, limitations. Like, I mean, it, it could yeah. be a limitation with the budget. It could be a limitation with the team's like willingness to try it. And, and the, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it could be. It, it, there could be so many different that's a great point the visual like hey we can't put this here because we have customers or someone's going to look at it this way or we sell it this way there's just so many variables that to give a cookie cutter program is kind of a an injustice in in my opinion you know there are things that you can stay um pretty consistent with over different operations but you know this is definitely one of the more unique uh, operations that i've worked in just because you guys are growing in a cubic uh, square, yeah. you know, cubic footage fashion, and and um, you have to control your pests differently, and you're using a different system than a lot of people are are used to. And it's even stuff as small as like when you started with us, you really thought that the answer for those fungus gnats, which are the best they've yep. been so far, was going to be a combination of 
the nematodes and the hypoaspis. Yep. Yep. And we figured out like, well, I don't have a great way to evenly distri distribute nematodes. And then the hypoaspis, we can't even get them onto the flats. Right. So then it's you coming to me and saying, hey, I think it's gonna be a theta. Yep. And I'm like, all right. And then now we've done it. He did the sticky traps this week and it's like getting better. And like I said, when I break it apart, you can see them going through, trying to find stuff. Just little stuff like that. Like, hey, this is, the hypoaspis isn't gonna work. We thought it was. Like, let's just switch it up. That's a really good point. Yeah, it's it's it may be the right the beneficial feet. for the yeah. pest, but Not is it the, the yeah exactly? How are you, how are you going to apply it? Is it actually going to work yeah. when you do? Is it cumbersome to do it? And that's a good point. Because I know, like for you, you probably have a lot of growers like with soil and stuff yep. that hypoaspis is it. Like they're down in that dirt, they're fine. It's part of the dirt. The yeah. peat becomes part it's of the, the dirt. dirt. Yeah. But for us, I can't have that, especially peat. I can't have that yep. carrier on my rock wool. That might not work. Let's switch it up a little bit, and then it. Yep. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, it's looking beautiful. A lot of a lot of happy people eating good food here. Um, it's just so different. It's like a little food. Yeah, and that's like when we talk to you. It's like, it's like, oh, I can't wait to come back out. <laughs> and we can't find. You're like, it'll be hard to find aphids one day. What were you like, thinking oh, when I said that? That's bullshit, but <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> It'll be hard to I find you aphids. Were just, like hyping me up. <laughs> like anyone can do this. Anyone can do this though. That's the truth, man. It like, just takes gumption, consistency, and like working through the the intricacies of your specific situation, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just staying up on it. Man, these look so good. Because these used to be... These used to be the worst. These used to be the worst. And these would actually be... Where they would be would be like right here. And right? Down in the so crown. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like so a new... Yeah. Yeah. But like right even here. The you supple can see spot. like there's, a, there's an aphidious working yep. that plant right now. Doing its thing. And especially with these, like getting in there in spring, like real deep down in there, especially when they get a little bit bigger, they're so like, um, so like brittle and crisp. I would go in there and be trying to hand kill and just be breaking off. Yeah. And I would just be breaking off and everything, trying to get in there. So now you have an army doing it for you. Exactly. Now, like when I spray these, I kind of try and do like what you were telling me about. I'll like stand back. I'll flip the one upside down so it's hitting the bottom and then I'll just like yep. around it and it takes like 30 seconds per tower.